The cricothyroid membrane is an elastic membrane located in the anterior midline of the neck. It is bordered superiorly by the thyroid cartilage and inferiorly by the cricoid cartilage. The thyroid cartilage consists of two lateral laminae that join at an acute angle in the midline to form the laryngeal prominence, which is more pronounced in males. Superior to the thyroid cartilage, and connecting it to the hyoid bone is the thyroid membrane. The cricoid cartilage forms the inferior border of the cricothyroid membrane and is the only completely circumferential cartilaginous structure of the larynx. The tracheal rings descend inferiorly to the cricoid cartilage. To locate the cricothyroid membrane, first identify the prominent thyroid cartilage then palpate the shallow depression just below it. The membrane measures about one centimeter longitudinally and two to three centimeters transversely. Preparation for both the traditional surgical cricothyroidomy and the Melker technique is the same. Position the patient's supine on the stretcher, Hyperextend the neck to better expose the anatomic landmarks, provided that cervical spine injury is not a concern. Initiate bag valve mask ventilations and make sure that the necessary equipment is available on a bedside tray. Prepare the anterior neck with a skin cleansing agent, such as chlorhexidine or povidone iodine. A sterile drape should be placed over the neck if available. The drape is not shown in this video in order to not obscure the procedure. Local anesthetic may be used for awake patients or those responding to painful stimuli. The required equipment for a traditional surgical cricothyrotomy includes an 11-blade scalpel, a tracheal hook, a trousseau dilator, and a tracheostomy tube or cuffed 6.0 endotracheal tube. The type of airway device utilized will depend on equipment availability and institutional practices. In this video, we demonstrate the procedure using the airway catheter found in the Melker cricothyroidomy tray. Stabilize the larynx with your non-dominant hand by grasping the sides of the thyroid cartilage with your thumb and middle finger. Use your index finger to palpate the depression over the cricothyroid membrane. Your non-dominant hand should remain in this position to control the larynx. Use the 11-blade scalpel to make a 2-3 to three centimeter vertical incision through the skin and subcutaneous tissue overlying the cricothyroid membrane. Use the index finger of your non-dominant hand to palpate the membrane through the incision. The remainder of the procedure is performed primarily by palpation, not visualization of the anatomy. Bleeding may obscure the field, and time cannot be taken to achieve hemostasis. If the cricothyroid membrane cannot be palpated, extend the initial incision superiorly or inferiorly. Once the membrane has been located, make a stabbing horizontal incision through the lower portion of the cricothyroid membrane. Temporarily place your index finger into the stoma to maintain a firm fix on its location. Next, place the tracheal hook into the opening in the membrane. Rotate the hook cephalad and pull it gently toward the ceiling to snare the inferior aspect of the thyroid cartilage. The tracheal hook now replaces your non-dominant hand as the stabilizer of the larynx. Do not remove the hook from the trachea until the airway has been placed. While holding the hook with your non-dominant hand, use your dominant hand to place the trousseau dilator into the trachea. Spread the blades open to dilate the opening in a vertical direction. You are now ready to insert the airway into the trachea. If an assistant is available, 
he or she should insert the airway while you maintain control of the tracheal hook and the dilator. Insert the airway into the trachea so that it is oriented in a plane parallel to the trousseau dilator. Then, rotate the dilator and the airway together 90 degrees while advancing the tube further into the trachea. Advance the airway catheter completely so that the flange of the device rests against the patient's neck. Once the tube has been fully inserted, you can remove the tracheal hook and the obturator from the airway catheter. Finally, inflate the cuff with air and begin to ventilate the patient with a bag valve mask. For additional tips and troubleshooting techniques, please refer to the written portion of this chapter. The Melker cricothyrotomy procedure relies on the Seldinger over-the-wire technique to place the airway. The equipment may be found in a commercially available prepackaged kit that includes a 12 milliliter syringe, an 18 gauge over-the-needle catheter, an 11 blade scalpel, a flexible guide wire in a plastic housing, a cuffed airway catheter, and a curved blunt dilator. The dilator must be placed into the airway catheter prior to the procedure. Note that the airway catheter has an inflatable cuff analogous to those found on endotracheal tubes. First, locate the cricothyroid membrane using your non-dominant hand. Remember, the membrane lays inferior to the prominent thyroid cartilage. Direct the over-the-needle catheter and syringe assembly in a caudal fashion and pierce the cricothyroid membrane at an angle 45 degrees relative to the skin surface. Pull back on the plunger during advancement. Entrance into the trachea will be heralded by a return of air into the syringe. Take care not to advance the needle too far, which may lead to perforation of the posterior wall of the trachea. Once proper needle position has been confirmed, advance the catheter over the needle and into the trachea. Next, thread the guide wire through the catheter and into the trachea. While maintaining firm control of the guide wire, gently remove the catheter. Use the 11 blade scalpel to make a vertical incision in the skin over the cricothyroid membrane to facilitate passage of the dilator and airway catheter. Carefully guide the blunt dilator over the guide wire. Be sure that the wire fully passes through the dilator and that you control the proximal end of the wire before proceeding. Advance the dilator and the airway catheter as a unit into the trachea using a reciprocating motion. The hub and flange of the catheter should be flush against the skin. Simultaneously remove the guide wire and the dilator from the catheter. Inflate the cuff with 8 to 10 milliliters of air and then begin to ventilate the patient. Proper catheter placement may be confirmed using auscultation and end tidal CO2 detection. Secure the catheter to the patient using cloth tracheostomy tapes that have been threaded through the flanges of the catheter.